down North Hobart last week, so it's a beautiful day for footy here. Don't think it's going to rain. It looks slightly ominous, but it's a beautiful day for footy for a cracker. Yeah, the sun is shining. And looking forward to this one, uh, an important, just about as important as a round three game can be for the Lauderdale Bombers. They certainly don't want to slide to, to an 0 3 start. It would be a, a tough hole they've put themselves in. One you'd expect them to win, but after last week, maybe Glenorchy, the, the belief might be there for the first time in a long time. Well, the belief is high, and it's the great unknown for them, isn't it? You know, who knows with a young squad, young side getting that first victory, the confidence that they bring in, particularly knowing that Lauderdale's dropped the first two at home. It's a big game. Interestingly, Andrew Phillips not starting in the ruck here first up for the Bombers. So it'll be Hayden Smith to take the first contest. Phillips has uh, perched himself deep forward. Uh, Harry Gunther standing alongside him. Gunther was absolutely outstanding last week in that victory. He was a colossus down back and an important matchup that one. We've, we've seen what Phillips can do in the opening couple of weeks. To, despite the results not coming their way, he's been fantastic. He's been a standout, hasn't he? Danger every time he gets the ball, and he's got a lot of it that first couple of games. So we're underway here at KG5 Umpire. Well, we're going to have a restart there, I reckon. One's a bit off. Conditions uh, perfect. Maybe the, the middle not quite completely smooth. We'll, we'll blame it on the middle. Geez, that happens a bit lately, doesn't it? Pump up, ready to go. Bang, bounce goes astray. Yeah, totally. Take, I mean, I'm all for retaining the tradition of the bounce purely for the introduction of the game, then throw it up from yep. that odd is Agreed. my spot, but wouldn't help there. So we'll go again with the toss up this time. Smith palms it down, looking to find Franklin. Paddle on ahead. Smith presenting an option immediately gathered, though, was Hooker. And holding the ball, the umpire red hot says not uh, making an attempt to get rid of it. And that has a chance to get first use here. Chipping it short there it was Wing. Looked at work it forward through Green. Or uh, Whitford rather, who drives him up towards half forward at two on one in favour of the Bombers. Smith out in the back should be able to gather this one. Has Sutton in support. Sweeps it out the back there for Benjamin Williams. Handball back to the Ruckman and he tries to find Sutton over the top. Wouldn't quite sit for him though. Throwing the body in the line there was Manson. And out of play for a ball in. Well, we loved his game last week, Sutton, and already a couple there, a little fumble there going outside. The handball wasn't to advantage, but you've got to watch him. Dangerous player off half back and set up a lot of play last week for the Bombers. All right. Got it back into play. Smith up against uh, Meredith in there. Meredith winning that one's down. Sutton finds out a handball. McManus going nowhere. Eventually, Williams able to kick it forward. Not a great kick, though. Chopped off, spinning into a little bit of trouble, Ling. And trying to bust through there, Hayden. He's caught. And the umpire pulls over the shoulder. So a chance to go inside 50 for the first time this afternoon here for the Magpies. Little sit-up kick is a good one. Solid fist from behind by Taney. Suki, though, saw the danger away. Pressure applied by Meredith. And it'll be... Brought to a stoppage inside 54, the Magpies. It was a beautiful kick there, Muir uh, Mew with his hands out as well. Just a great spoil reaching over the top. All he could do, and he got it done. Meredith tries to come over the top. Smith plants himself, wins it down. It's not escaping out of there. Back inside. Again, tough congested game. Plenty of stoppages early in this one. All not flowing out. Mankai's bringing the heat. Buoyed by that victory last week. Smith slaps it down. First it will be Whitford. One back though. Dropped clean there by McManus. Over the shoulder, the free kick paid the way. The bombers, no, the magpies rather, they'll drive it inside 50. It's a good relieving mark taken by Poland. Poland looks to immediate release them over the top. Franklin, or Bill Chambers rather, knocks it back inside. Chance for Phillips to get his old patch for the first time as Tilly fires it back. Down the line, touched off the boot, so to be play on, spoiled out of play regardless. As uh, Roberts comes across there. With Simpson and uh, from Blowfield. Kai's swarming to the ball early on. So Meredith a little outsized in the ruck and he's trying to get a bit of a run and a leap. That one came over the top of Smith. Meredith couldn't take it cleanly. Allowed Smith to get back in, just tumbles it off the ground. 
Come back in dispute. Good tackle Franklin on Roberts and he's caught him holding the footy. So a chance for Franklin to send the Bombers forward for the first time this afternoon. The lead's pretty well covered off though by the Magpie. So he just chips a clever little one inside. Handball across to McManus. McManus up to the teeth of goal. Might bounce all the way through. It does. And Robbie McManus opens the scoring here at KG5. Well, what a tackle by Franklin out here, just in front of us, in front of his box. It's a big way to lift your side early. Someone, you know, taking him on and then bang, no way. Great kick inside. And then the goal probably was trying to just kick it out advantage, but beautiful kick. Yeah, some great cool. start for Lauderdale. Clever play on the goal line just to shepherd it through, knowing it was online. So first attack, first goal for the Bombers. No guys. A bit more of the ball in the opening couple of minutes, but efficient, which is not an adjective we could have used to describe them last week, Mitch. <laughs> no. Or indeed the week prior, and they kicked eight goals 16, so they'll be looking to tidy up in that area today. Good bodywork for Meredith then too, he'd be a bit dirty on himself not to take it clean out of the ruck there, but a good sign for him to know that he can get the big boys underneath the ball where his body wants to be. Massive task for him, he wins this one down. Riley Hooker in there for the Bowers. Smith picks it up, fired out the handball. Tilly takes it away, turns and sends them in the Thor Bosket direction. He just flicks it up over the top. Back in dispute. Bosket might get another crack, receives the handball. Bosket chisels one into the pocket. It's a beautiful kick. Superb ball use there. Presenting up out it is McManus. A chance for two in a minute here for McManus. A little tough kick. That's the experience from a leader such as Thor. 45 metres out on an angle. Would have got himself a nice little highlight then to drill that home, but had the nous to just lower his eye. Beautiful kick. So a tough task in the pocket here for McManus. Can he kick a second early on? He sends it on its way, trying to work it back, but it's across the face and punched not through in the end and trying to gather it was Blowfield. And seen across for a minor score. Simpson from full back. The the zone pushing up here a little. So he chips this one in the pocket. Takes what was offered to him. What about the return ball, but felt better of it. And take it along the other side. Not a great kick though, always to the favour of the Bombers wingman there. An opportunity to send it forward via hook out. Good ball and good hands again. Superb stuff from Campbell Hooker. He wheels around immediately, releases to Phillips. Another great set-up kick, Campbell Hooker this time. We saw Hooker on display last week with that beautiful left. If it wasn't having a shot, he was setting up his teammates. But a bit of a worry, I reckon, for Glenorchy early. Three insides from Lauderdale, clean footy from Lauderdale too. Hasn't been man on, opportunity for spoil. So a bit of a worry in defence there early. So he started deep in the forward line today, Andrew Phillips, with Hayden Smith taking the ruck work. Sam Siggins, of course, still out injured. Can Phillips be the answer to their goal scoring wise to get their second of the afternoon? He sends it on its way. Look beautiful off the boot. It's straight through the middle. And the Bombers get their second. They're 2 1 13. Magpies yet to score. Well, I sort of thought it was a little strange Smith starting in the ruck when you've got a weapon like Phillips, but then when you see that happen, uh, the ability, the agility to lead out, take a mark, and a solid finisher as well. So, what a massive weapon, as you said, without the experience of the great Sam Siggins down deep. Well, I think it's been said a lot in the past few years that you'd love to have two Sam Siggins, one to be in the ruck and one forward, and Phillips have almost basically got that They've now. pretty much got it, yep, and then he goes and does a hammy. So when he's back, it'll be a very exciting time, as we spoke about last week, for the Bombers. Still then, Hayden Smith, uh, a more than a capable man in the ruck. They've got plenty of big men, McGuinness, to come back into the side as well. Man of the Giants at the tip this year is oh. crunching tackle in the middle. Smith fired out the handball. Franklin... Back in, palming off nicely there was uh, Riley Hooker. Sends them deep inside the 450. Phillips from behind. Bosket got a fist in. Handball to the pocket. An opportunity for McManus. But he's off target. In Sharpie, the Bombers. And since they already get uh, some goals here today, having struggled in that department the first two weeks of the season. Gunther on short, it was a terrible kick to him, sold him into some trouble. He's good enough to get out of the situation, and that one is going to float out of bounds on the full. A little untidy from the Magpies there, an opportunity for Campbell Hooker. 
and hang it up another target again. Place out. Beautiful ball movement inside 50 here. It's just a little bit too easy at the moment. But Glenorchy are looking around at each other now, looking about who's on who. Uh, as we mentioned, every entry now has been clean as a whistle with very little pressure. So there's some looking around going on what's happening. But, again, heat of the game. Early second game for Glenorchy this season. New squad. Uh, they're going to have to work it out pretty quick. So the Continenza looking for a quick fire third here for the Bombers. A 45 degree angle. And late change into the team. Continenza. And on to the scoreboard. So the Bombers have their third. They're up to a 20 point lead early on. And some warning lights on the dashboard for the Magpies early days here. Yeah, absolutely. First couple of entries for went to Glenorchy after a couple of probably dubious to say free kicks. But ever since then, it has been Lauderdale smashing forward entries and uh, able, able to hit the scoreboard as well. So some serious pressure only 10 minutes in. I think the most of these lovely playing conditions with their kicking so far, the Bombers. A real wind to speak of, sun shining. Perfect day for football here at KG5 and home side. Leading a response. They've been jumped here in the first 10 minutes. One down. Flip out the handball. Perkins trying to get in there. He fired out the handball to Sutton. Poland pushed up, gave it across the hands of uh, Perkins, who's brought down. Right, the hooker rather, as it'll be tossed up once more. He wins it down to Hooker. Unable to gather it, Fletcher Hooker. And Farrow in after it. And Boss says, I'll have it. Smith, one down. Take a lane, Hooker. He's immediately claimed, though. The stoppages, who can get the clearance here? The guys need one. Meredith left early, Smith palmed it down classily. Franklin burrowing it forward, then ran into a bit of trouble, has to get rid of it, did, but uh, not legally, says the umpire. Holding the footy, and leaving for a kick paid at half back for the Magpies. You can tell in the last few stoppages as well, at Lauderdale are looking to attack, and it's good. All on the defensive foot, following their play around. So that will inspire Lauderdale knowing that they're trying to get first to the footy, but Glenorchy need to probably have that mindset as well. Again, no obvious targets, so you pick long to a contest. Two rucks down there, Perkins drifting across the face. Fends one off and chips across to Bosket. Oh, oh. Don't argue from Big Thor. <laughs> Pure strength and he gets it over the top to a hooker. Hooker's kick not a great one for Patton. He made it work though, Patton. Controlled it nicely. The kick chopped off. Nicely done by McGann getting back in support. Umpire will spot a free kick for a hold. And go the way of the Magpies. Males. And find a target off half back. It's been Huff trying to exit defensive 50 and again, unable to do so. It brings the roar from the, uh, the Bombers bench. Think they're up and about for that. I think Lauderdale's entries, they can afford to probably just slow it down a little bit. They're rushing in there, but they've got Glenorchy cooked when they are entering inside 50. So slow it down, you've got plenty of time. Your men are usually leading in a really good position. Just take your time a little bit more and see how that fares. Back into play once more. Smith cuddles it down. Shrugging away with it was Roberts. Down the line. Backing back with the flight was Winter. He then applies the tackle on Green. And of course, the stoppage on the wing. It's the first couple of minutes, this is kind of where the wall has been put up and they've been able to move beyond the Magpies. And get a clearance here. Smith again having his way in the rough contest. Chip down the line, just eludes Continenza, an opportunity for Blowfield. Nice footwork, got it across to Roberts, back to Blowfield. Roberts again, corralled, nowhere to go, and it spills the way of Tilly, flips it over the top for Hooker, won't sit for him. Coming across was Males, but Hooker got there in the end, keeps the ball in motion, blast it in there. And across the line it goes. Phillips to take this contest up against Gunther. And so him back in the TSL. He was 
Outstanding last week. Did some ruck work. Phillips gets the better of him, though. Sutton first to the fall of it. Might be a little high from Franklin. Ooh. Gets away with it. Going to take full advantage. No, it won't because the hold's been paid. That is going to go the way of uh, Tilly. Well, I'm not really sure how that wasn't paid. It's generally in any footy, any format, when your head's down going for the ball, if someone gets you around the, the ears like that, you get a free kick. So, strange one there. Yeah, somewhat fortunate, you'd have to say, the Bombers can Sam Tilly make it count. He'll kick from 45, drifting across the face and across for a minor score. So, all the scoring from the Bombers thus far. 21 points in the ascendancy. And that guy's who scored 90% of uh, his scores last week in transition. Just struggling to transition the ball right now. They've coughed it up once more, able to recover it as Hayden sends it wide. Again, it's an ugly worm burner of a kick and it's going to come back in with interest. Hooker, made the handball, kick around the corner. To the hot spot in the Ford 50. Almost juggling the mark was Blowfield. Spills out the way of Sutton, slaps it on the boot and misses one he maybe should have had. Yep, should have. They all flew there though, Glenorchy. Sutton was the only one that remained down. Read it beautifully out the outside, but every Glenorchy player flew for the mark. He nearly held a rip up, mind you. But they've got to keep one down at least. Punches it short to Hayden. There's an option short, that's ignored. Instead, Heads up towards the wing. Try along the outer side. They won't sit in there for Liam Wing who sees it across the line. Back in once more. Smith with front position. Palm but down. Bombers will move inside the 450. Gunther and Phillips, a fascinating duel. The Magpies, I thought they were going to be able to repel, but just missing the handball and a strong tackle. And of course, another stoppage. They just can't get the ball up beyond defensive side of the wing at the moment, the Magpies. Hits and repeat as stoppage is generally favouring the Bombers with Smith in the ascendancy in the ruck. Turning away was Tilly. That was sharply done there to knock that down. Around the corner goes Manson. It's a directionless kick though, straight out of bounds, although it might have come off a hand. Hey. Toss back in, Phillips now doing the ruck work. He slaps it down. In the corner, and will bounce from Blowfield. All over the top, back into dispute. Anyone take clean possession here? Diving in is uh, Jenkins. Phillips in a wrestling match here. And they're up decisively in the end, ending up on the deck is Manson. There we go again. Phillips and Manson. Phillips with a fair size advantage in this one. He uses it. Double palm boundary side. First to it was Franklin. You know, kick forward up towards the teeth of goal. Smith working his way. Tilly in from the side. Handball was nicely shut down. Has to get a kick away. Does into open space and a foot race developing here. Hooker first to it. Perkins rather gave it back there to Bell Chambers. Bell Chambers through traffic. Beautiful work from Bell Chambers. The mark not quite completed. Nicely defended there by Meredith from the pocket. The snapped in the direction of Smith. The spot behind by Gunther. Well, they've probably got to try and get ready for that now, Glenorchy. Okay, if they've just got to try and get it out of there, that rush kick just got it out of there quick. But then Lauderdale were first to the ball. So quarter time discussion. If we're going to boot it out, let's all get there and try and get it back down yeah, our end. Terrible kick for Thompson. Put the pressure on themselves again. Gunther gave the handball. A little chip kick might be 15. Bell Chambers slides in. Well, apparently that will be 15. Not quite sure about that, but Bell Chambers seizes upon it. 
Well, look at the replay. I reckon if I lay down, that's about as far as that ball travelled, the length of Mitch McPherson. But again, that short kick coming out of defence is doing them no favours at all. It's got to be long. You've got to clear the pressure, release the valve. Well, there's three kickouts under no pressure. They've missed targets on there. Their own worst enemy at the moment, the Magpies, is Bell Chambers from the angle. That's a nice looking kick. How do you like that from Phil Bell Chambers? Threat to the eye of the needle. And the Bombers are out by 29 points early on here. That went left, right, and then darted back in. It looked like it was gone for all money to the right of the, um, the goalpost. And then just got a real last minute breath of wind and went through the middle. He turned the crowd and gave him a little bit of course, as we love Phil. Of course, he's ready up and about to get the crowd going. Yes, uh, if they're going to dish it out and be prepared to cop it back where uh, Mr. Bell Chambers is concerned. <laughs> yeah. He's always an entertainer. The nine scoring shots to Zilch now. The ball, probably since the first three minutes of the game, hasn't gone par into the deep, into the attacking 50 of Glenorchy, so it's a worry. Yeah, some ominous signs early on here. There's a little bit of wind picking up, but nothing that significant. Just need to use the ball better by foot here, the Magpies. Turnover's really burning them. Phillips gathered it, and turn he's gathered it. Phillips able to release the handball, and they're out the back of the stoppage if it will sit for them. Find the handball back. An opportunity perhaps here for McManus. Just over the head of Tilly. Spills out the back. Hooker there, but Kumpa sees it across. Now, can they find a target this time? Simpson in kick out duties. Short to Gunther. Lowfield is in a little bit of space, but there's that option. Oh dear, Paul Voskett shuts it down. So when you look down the ground there, every option he had was only 20, 30 metres away. There was no one coming from there attacking 50 lead. Big, strong lead down the wing for a big, long kick. So he had no other option and unfortunately smothered. It's not hitting their kicks here. Out of the defensive half, the Magpies. Lindenau sweating over after a tough couple of weeks. They're looking to feast early on here. Gumpy hits the deck. Tackle applied by Thompson. And forces a stoppage. Roving is Hooker superbly around the corner. Hooker has another one there. Piling it on here, the Bombers. 5 6 36. And it is that lead because the Magpies are yet to score, and that was just all too easy. Sure was. He's a beautiful kick hooker. He's been a beautiful kick setting up on the run, streaming through the midfield or doing a U turn at the forward 50. So when he gets one of those, a nice juke on his own, spin around. Beautiful goal, great finish, but you mentioned the word feast. It sure is. 36 point lead to zero. Yeah, it's been a little bit famine in the front of golf from this year, so they're looking to cash in here. And the Magpies, well, confidence they might have had coming into this one. That bubble might have burst pretty quick here, Mitch. Get some experience around the ball now, I reckon. Get your experienced players around it. Slow it down a little bit to finish the quarter. Thought about giving the handball there, Hooker, and then he's caught holding the ball. Probably should have given it away. Well done, Connor Ling. Nate. Get it moving forward here. And it's all a little bit stagnant. The ball was well set up behind the football. Ling eventually heads wide to a contest. Spiked away by Suki. Turning into trouble. Ratcliffe. And he's in trouble here, I reckon, Ratcliffe. The tackle will be rewarded. They've taken the advantage, though. Oh, no. They've not made the most of it there, Muir. They've coughed it up. And sweeping across was Racket into the middle. Nice kick to Sutton. Sutton. Sends it up towards Continenza from behind. Spills out the back towards Patton. Continenza follows up, just tumbles it inside 450 towards Tilly. Looks to turn. Lost his footing. He took it across the line. What a shame down here. Beautiful tackle. Pinned the arm. Gave him absolutely no chance to get rid of the ball. And then, again, just that lack of experience. Looking to take off. Excited at the opportunity of a forward 50 entry. Wasn't to be. Gunther and Hooker in the ruck. Worked for by McManus. Dropping the shoulder a little, but not getting rewarded. 
Uh, if he hasn't uh, picked for high, I thought he might go for holding the ball. And one he answers ball up. Has to be one or the other there, surely. He all but took him on, dropped his knees a little bit, holding the ball for mine. Unable to take this one away, burrowing in Thompson. Spill outside the contest. Foskett almost able to interject. Blowfield just looking for the safety of the line. Another good tackle right there. Takes it out of play. Makes it done by Ling, so. Campbell hook out up against Gunther. Gunther able to come across and win it down to Ling. Ling flicks it up to the top for Joseph. And they get something going here, the Magpies. Wide open out the back. How will it spill? It might be accommodating. We've got to loose out the back if they can work it to them, but taking it away was Poland. He's kicked a poor one, though. Unable to find Williams and out of play. I think that shows the importance of keeping your set up the same. Uh, you had a uh, full forward leading out there. Missed opportunity, good effort, spoil, but then no one was around to crumb the ball. Everyone had been sucked up the ground, so it's important that they continue to hold structure as a forward set up. Yeah, Roberts was just trying to sneak out the back and hope he could pick out one there. It was, it was a shallow throw there. Flattest throw in I've ever seen. Wasn't it? As this one's towards the half forward line, you are in second to it. Plenty of numbers for the Bombers as they'll sweep it across. Ratcliffe in some space at fullback. back. Goes short now to Bell Chambers. Keeps it moving quickly. Kick. It's a beautiful ball to Luke Patton. Oh, he's really standing out for the Bombers here thus far. Patton, centering ball again. Ball use to Hooker. And Hooker, he too hits the target. He finds Racket. Can Racket find the man inside the forward 50? Not quite. Pitches, unable to gather it there, Clark. And then running into an open goal is Sutton. And they have their sixth. And this is looking ugly early. It's 6 6 42. The Magpies are yet to score. Well, they could have got caught out just running it straight down the wing. They've had re relatively easy entries, but they took on through the middle there. A couple of beautiful kicks inside. And then again, that just wave of Lauderdale pressure. Sutton had the ball two, 10 seconds ago down in the back 50, but uh, his work rate second to none. Great finish. And then by uh, Craig Blaschke, too, there, firing a handball out to him. but... Far too much space and yeah, we spotted him. It's just a hard work from Sutton really to get to that contest, give him the extra man there. He cut running, that's what he's known for. He covers every blade of grass out there, does Reese Sutton. And the shackles of the first few weeks looking well and truly broken for the Bombers. And a big score on the cards here, unless the Magpies can right the ship. Good tackle the one by Liam Ling, but he'll take it away once more. This time through Franklin. Towards the half forward line, spoiled away, but it's going to spill into the path of Perkins. His handball chopped off. Magpies will try and wing it back on the wing. There'll be a trip goal for a kick going away. So perhaps an opportunity to go inside 450 here. You are an option ahead of the ball. That's where he heads. Contest. He back there for the Bombers. They've won a contest. That kick charge down. Spinning away Liam Ling. Couldn't quite gather it. And out of play. Deep into quarter number one. You'd imagine it'll go for a while though. Plenty of stoppages and plenty of goals. Been busy, Liam Ling, liked his game, hasn't got his hands on the ball a lot, but his effort's been wonderful uh, in defence, but obviously in the attacking space as well. And Phillips palms that one down. Tilly tumbles a kick into the middle. And bounces pretty nicely for Bell Chambers. Can't quite bring it over to Spell, did eventually and fired a lovely handball, and they're out the back again here. Not a great kick though, Gunther across to chop it off. There's a wall at the back last week, Gunther, who switches across to Roberts now. Roberts chips it short and finds Matt Joseph. So their key move is getting involved in this chain. Where to next? Stabs a nice little ball and he finds Jenkins. 
Jenkins kick, oh. turned over, coughed it straight up to Franklin. Franklin to Boskett, oh, dropped one off his chest in the end, goes back in. Just shields it a little, Simpson fighting the way there for the Magpies. Tumbling kick, we've seen it bounce off. Half back, right hand, charging out with it is Thompson. Thompson tumbles one, bounced over the head of Poland. Trying to gather it in Manson. Manson slaps it on the boot, not the ball Muir was looking for, and it bounces towards the pocket. Ling's bursting out after this. Can he get there, Liam Ling? Wouldn't sit for it. Might have been brought down without it. Can he fight? Some force a stoppage here. He does, so Good effort. really well done again by Liam Ling there. When we talk about Glenorchy going long, they're persistent on kicking it short. We saw them right here in front of us, just chip, chip, chip. They worked it through that time with a big, deep, long inside 50, but maybe that's the goal. I mean, they're worried about the size of the, the bombers in those area contests as that kick almost brought in by Luke Patton. And there is the siren for quarter time. Been a barnstorming start from the bombers, 6-6-42. Glenorchy had the first couple of inside 50s from there. They battled yet to score. All one-way traffic here at KG5, Mitch McPherson. Yeah, absolutely. Lauderdale dominant. Well, the first three minutes went Lauderdale's way with a couple of, as we said, free kicks allowing them to go inside 50. But since then, it's been all Lauderdale. First of the footy, hard, aggressive insertions inside their forward 50 and uh, been able to finish as well. I mean, 12 shots, 6-6. Six, six, it could have been a lot worse for Glenorchy. So plenty for the bank for us to talk about here at the huddles at quarter time. Lauderdale, for a disappointing first couple of weeks, look like they're getting it right back on track. We'll be back in a few minutes' time to see if the Magpies can turn this ship around. Because at the moment, it is looking ominous. Quarter time, it's Lauderdale, 6-6-42. Lucky Magpies yet to score.
the siren sounds as we get ready for quarter number two here at KG5. It's been a perfect start for the Lauderdale Bombers, the visitors well on top in this one. 42 points ahead at the first change. Mitch McPherson, what do Glenorchy need to do here in quarter number two to, to be a little bit more competitive and then try and stem the bleeding a lot? Well, I just think hands on the ball give the opportunity for their teammates to have first use and slow it down a little bit and play it at their pace. It was just all Lauderdale's pace and they were definitely just chasing backside for predominantly most of that quarter, but again, an inexperienced side and but a fitting start for Lauderdale, though, just what the doctor ordered for those guys. Yeah, they'll be uh, perhaps looking to, to build a little bit of percentage here today. It should be a pretty tight season after a frustrating first couple of weeks, so we're happy to be scoring a bit more freely, I think, but it's been uh, out of the middle, it's been pretty dominant. Hayden Smith will start in there against Josh Meredith. Start quarter number two. We're just going to wait for a, uh, a gate to be shut and we can uh, get underway here. Of all things. Yeah, so, uh, I'm taking care of that. I think we're good to go here for the second term at KG5. Comfortable lead for the Bombers here. The Magpies respond in the second turn. Let's try and get somewhat back on more equal footing. But I just tell uh, uh, Fletcher Hooker to clear out a little. Could have been the scoring end too. Wait and see. <laughs> well, for the contest sake, let's hope so. It's not down first. The ball is Hayden. It's his hands to it and across to Connor Ling. He'll send this one up towards the half forward line. Tracking it there was Manson. Mostly done by Martin though. Paddle back inside. Green battling away. Umpire spots it over the shoulder, so they've got an opportunity to go inside 450 here at the Magpies. They'll drive it in to the pocket. Spawned away, but another over the shoulder paid and a free kick in the way of Joseph. So an opportunity for the Magpies to get on the board. Great attack by Green there in the half forward as well. Giving, as we spoke about just before the quarter started, giving his team first use. Great attack. The coach would love to see that. Sets his teammate up for a shot on goal. He was uh, in form. Goal kicking form last week, Joseph. We'll see if he can get on the score sheet here. He 
sends it on its way. Looks pretty good off the boot and draws the roar of the crowd. So they're on the board, the Magpies. That's a better start here in quarter number two. Maybe it is the score again. Scoring in, Andrew. See, we called it. <laughs> One straight Don't six to Magpies. 6-6-42, six, six, and yeah, that was uh, much better for all the Magpies. A couple of free kicks in there, but uh, they won the ball out of the middle. They got the ball in there uh, nice and quickly, and good things happened. Well, you said a few moments ago that uh, there wasn't much of a breeze, and then a little bit went past, and I nearly gave you a big cuddle. This grandstand that we are in started shaking. Thought we were in a bit of strife there. We're relatively high up out here at KG5. Yeah, look, I was watching the, the Masters golf last night. After that, this seems very, very light. <laughs> so basically playing in a hurricane. Yes. This is back to the middle hooker. Brought down by uh, Merritt. It's got the handball all the way. And that's certainly dangerous looking tackle there. The fire calls for it. Smith reaches over the top. Turning away with it though, Hayden gets the clearance up towards half forward, flying out there was Racket. Gathering it off half back, Martin, fight a handball over the top for Hooker. It was pressured by Roberts, goes back inside, kick. shows some composure, beautiful kick and then a lightning fast hands, but it's a wonderful tackle from Roberts. He runs down Williams and gets the free kick. Love it, great play all round, Lauded up taking the game on, streaming through the middle, but bang, great tackle. Let's well, made it stick as this one's chipped in the direction of Connolly. Good for you, you're splitting these Ling boys too. Look exactly the same from where we are. Yeah, I'm uh, sure we'll get it wrong a few times. They do look very similar from this far away as this one's chipped in. Ugly ball. And there is uh, the goal kicker, Matty Joseph. And he'll pump them deep inside the 450 here. And floating out the back and taking another mark. So suddenly come to life here. Meredith sliding in there, just running off Smith. An opportunity for two early goals to start the term. They just look like a different team. The way they're slowing it up. Oh, there's a little bit of Biffo in the, in the goal square. But the way they're slowing it up, they look like a completely different team. And the skills as well. A couple of great kicks inside 50. The trees don't suggest the wind's blowing any stronger, but... Magpies have made a positive start. Can they convert this one, Meredith? They can't. He missed there. Off his toe. Didn't catch it clean, did he? 1-1-7. Better signs, though, from the Magpies. So the Bombers dominated that first term. This one short to Finn Racket in the back pocket. Oh. And suddenly it's the Bombers turning the ball over off half-back. Joseph's handball picked off. Patton, pressured by Joseph. Patton turns away from him. It's his kick, but always to the favour of Clark. Couldn't quite reel it in. Got it at ground level. Slapped it on the boot. Got in there quick. Oh, through the hands there of uh, Jenkins. And the number's out the back here for uh, Poland. Kick just to lose Blowfield. Swings out the back. Uh, shrugging the tackle there of Meredith. And... No no way. Way. Good forward. They're out the back here, Sutton in space. He's usually a classy finisher, instead just chips it short and he finds Phillips. Did not the blaze away, just put it out to the advantage of the big man and extends those long levers. There's something about this back pocket down here to the right hand side of your screen. What's going on there? No side can get the ball out of there, chipping it smaller than 15 metres and not being able to find a way out. Yeah, it's been turned over central, that pocket. So uh, Phillips looking to respond to the Nagpies opening goal here in the second turn. Lead back beyond 40 points. He's got one, Andrew Phillips. And he's got two. Looks pretty good. He celebrates. And he gets his second of the afternoon. The former Essendon Ruckman there. And it's a 41-point lead to Lauderdale. Quick response after a, a good start. A good little fight back there from Glenorchy in the second quarter. But I reckon Lauderdale would be pleased with the way Glenorchy have been able to move the footy at the start of this second quarter. Lauderdale were dominant for the whole quarter. And uh, to, able to, to be able to come out and let them have that opportunity, they wouldn't be pleased about it. So a nice little answer. It's interesting to see if they can keep the foot down. Yeah, well, I suppose the, the first few minutes of quarter one was definitely the Magpies best, and then it, the game really got away from them after yep. the, well, Phillips got that first one on the ball. We'll see if they can... Uh, Hang a little longer here in quarter at number two. No one going to really clear us here. Tony, 
Toss back up. Smith reaches over the top. Ling dives in. Didn't want to get a hand to it and knocked it to the advantage of Thompson. Now we go forward once more, the Magpie. Spearing the ball. Beautifully taken there by Joseph. He chips it over the top. Muir presenting up. Sookie got a fist in. It's a free. The guy says play on as Martin gathers and just slaps it on out of there. Phil Boskett presenting up with the football, taken away from him. Some good hands, turning into trouble there. And not going to escape the Nat Franklin tackle. Found down by Smith. Slap from the floor. At the back, Boskett couldn't take clean possession. Back to Smith, fires a handball inside the hooker. Now the check side inside the forward 50. Spiked away by Meredith. Now the handball from Simpson. Work it off, half back, back into the corridor. That's a good strong arc taken there. And the quick release on the handball. Ling chips it short. Good hands from Clark. He's under pressure there. They continue to just work it with short chips. Simpson, the latest in the chain. They've got some free men inside 450 here. Oh, wasn't a great kick to their advantage though. Had two options. Couldn't reel it in there again. When a uh, hold of the jumper is going to say a free kick to Boskett. And two free men. Boskett thought he bought himself 50 metres by playing, uh, on, playing onto a man who hadn't cleared out. Threw himself around in a nice big 360 to make sure he got the free kick and then wanted 50. And yeah, now Fire says just be happy with the free kick and his clear and <laughs> kick up towards Campbell Hooker. Well, they will get 50 on this occasion. And some afters too. Oh, Smith. It's on beyond the football at the moment. Meanwhile, Fletcher Hooker. And Campbell Hooker, others got the opportunity. To kick the Bombers eight. He sets out from just inside the paint. It's a beautiful looking kick, straight through the middle. Cannot kick the ball any better than that. And an eighth of the afternoon for Lauderdale, and they do respond to the early surge from the Magpies. Pretty clear 50 on replay there, Matt Joseph. Very late and high. Didn't really give the umpire much option. No, pretty black and white, that one. Have we seen Phillips in the ruck yet today at all? Um, maybe like two minutes. Not really. <laughs> Smith holding his own, of course, but interesting that we're, they're not utilising him. He's just down... Uh, Sitting 20 metres from the goal line. And the size back line, maybe just looking to take advantage of his sheer height. The Magpies will get this uh, centre break. It's the best kick, though. It's the advantage of Poland, who's able to gather off half back. Or wrap it, rather. It's a long fly! Oh, yeah. Almost a mark. Hooker in there. That was charged down. It was almost amazing from Connelling. Well, Chambers with the handball to Patton. Patton takes a man on, has oh. to get rid of this. He's caught stone cold there by Ling. What a tackle. And rewarded. Nearly took mark of the year and then a great tackle to follow up. He's hard at it. Connor Ling. That's not 15. Patton aware. It's a late call from the other one. Lots of pressure to Hayden. Hayden did well in the end to turn out of trouble. And he's kicked the finds Jenkins, who marks under pressure. So Jenkins sends it wide and finds Liam Ling. Ling. 20. The bomber shirts back in defence. He's just going to send it high into the forward 50 towards oh, the up. sea of bodies there. Martin had a lot of it and eventually he's paid the mark. Boskett wants it on. The one-on-one -on, -one on the wing, he wants a long kick down the line. Screaming for it, Phil Boskett. He likes his matchup with Blowfield. He's going to get it. He heads there. That's why he just had the size on Blowfield and he knew it. Class. Boskett. 
Risky kick into the corridor and it's dropped and that might open them back the other way here. An opportunity to go for for the Magpies as it was uh, Howard there with it but they've coughed it up. Sutton able to get to Tilly. Tilly now strolling inside 50 unmarked. He'll send it long and wide. He just registers it behind in the end. I think Phillips, I don't think overly impressed in the goal square with that. No, not pumped about that. Great kick from Phil. I mean, backed himself in to take that mark. Robbie probably have his time again to take that mark in the centre of the ground. And fortunately, they got the turnover, but taking it on through the middle. And it's uh, Howard out there with uh, McManus for company. Another late change, Magpies. A couple of them uh, from the name team. Josh Allen on one of those outs, which undoubtedly hurts them. And back into play, Meredith and Smith. Smith didn't quite get it. Dolph Chambers, his handball broken up. And forms another stoppage. No free kick in the end. No attempt to get rid of it, perhaps the call. Empire's working along the outer wing. Travelled by Manson, couldn't take it, but he's able to keep a hold of the footy. And now he sends it along looking for Green, but it's nicely chopped off back there. Kick, a poor one over the head of Continenza, invites in Liam Ling. Liam Ling first to it, fires out the handball. Can they get it out the back here? They've got a loose man turning and shooting. Is Joseph Howell a bounce? He trickles, he oh. bounces backwards and then the oh, other no. way. Well, they deserve that, man. That was a great pl passage of play. What a shame. The home crowd was riding every twist and turn of that bit, tumbling bounce. In the end, they're able to cover it off the bombers and they'll try and work it out of half back here. Short kick in the middle for Bell Chambers, who's been prolific early in this one. Poland in the middle of the ground, usually a lovely kick, and he just turns and sends it deep inside the Ford 50, trying to find Campbell the hooker. Couldn't quite bring it down. Blowfield. Magpies who Gunther under pressure. It's a nice kick, kick from Gunther. He found Josh Whitford. Whitford heels off to his right, sends it out the back, but Martin, the interceptor, is ever chopping that off. And again, happy to bite off the risky kick into the corridor. Drop back into the hands of Bell Chambers. They just about make it work here, the Bombers. Poland, that lovely left boot of his again. Boskett's just peeled off behind the contest. Poland picked him out, and then he chips it back inside. And he finds Blaschka. He can go back and try and kick his size knife. Yeah, when they do cut through Lauderdale, they look ominous, and uh, when it passes the centre of the ground, they seem to have men all over the place on their own. So that'll be the goal for Lauderdale when they get a D50, get it quick through the middle of the ground, free up their forwards who seem to just sort of have far too much space. So Craig Blaschka into the side this one, set up one in quarter number one. Can he cramp one of his own here? And extend the lead to 53 points. He can. Bit of a crowd favourite. And judging by the reaction, I'd say it's his first goal at TSL level and all the team get there and get around him. You do love to see that. Yeah, you love that. Crowd up and about. He had a little despoil earlier down here in front of us and the crowd went wild and now he's kicked a sausage. Everyone's up and about. Okay, and a goal assist for him on his debut, I think. And 53 points now the margin. Much like quarter number one, after a, a bright first few minutes of the Magpies, it's the Bombers just reasserting control and dominance of this contest. Yeah, too skillful, a little bit too good today. But I think Glenorchy being, Josh would be impressed with the second quarter and how they've found a way to keep their pushes into the forward 50 a little bit more consistent than what they dropped off in the first quarter. Still a long time to go in this quarter, though. Smith wins it down. Hook up. Very easy. Sends it across towards Patton. Doing nicely, that was Clark. And the handball, wonderful rundown tackle. And it's going to be rewarded. Opportunity here for Matt Franklin. Goes in the Phillips direction. Oh. And just put it out into space majestically for him. 
Great kick. Franklin's a beast, isn't he? You would not want to be going one on one at the footy with him. He backs himself in. He's a hard man. I mean that the Glenorchy uh, defender there didn't see it coming, obviously, but like a freight train, just took him out through the ball. Sets up another Phillips shot on goal. It is noticeable here just how much bigger so many of those little lower bodies are, isn't yep. it? A real advantage in that department. And with that comes confidence, and you can certainly see that across the ground, the, the confidence that Lauderdale players with the experience of walking around the ground. As Phillips goes back for goal number three. Goal umpire does not move straight over the hat. He is lacing that football today, Andrew Phillips. He's playing purely as a forward, and he's got three goals. Or he might be about to move in the middle. And 9 6 60. Well, he's going into the middle, and uh, we can't read minds, but he's probably thinking, leave me here. Leave me down forward. Um, absolutely dominating and could have filled my socks. But he'll go in and do his job in the middle. Well, just 10 7 67, the ground scoreboard. I think the, the Magpies have just done updating that one for the time being, not, not loving the constant updates. <laughs> so 60-point uh, margin now. It's pretty... Emphatic stuff thus far, and Meredith, outsized by Phillips, who just leaps up, wins it down, and then roves his own ball. Oh. Gave the handball off to Hooker. Hooker, shipping it wide, searching there. Campbell Hooker couldn't quite find him, and they try and bounce it half back, but it's chopped off by Boskett, not 15, gave it across to Hooker, diving in there. Umpire says push in the back. And Magpie's ball, and half back. Swings it wide. Diving mark taken right to the line there. On the far side of the ground. Chipped down and spots up Manson. Juggled it and then sends it deep. But Phillips has just perched himself behind the football there and he intercepts. Lovely ball. Holland. Chips it short. Franklin immediately wheels and releases. Big Smith at full forward now with Gunther for company. And he tossed back into play. Cooper Meredith was an example in that last passage of play. They haven't shied away the defence of and They're still having a crack, trying to run off their opponent, doing what they can to keep the ball moving. So the coach would be happy with that. Smith paddles it down. Okay, just past the football. The ball of that one, Jeremiah Perkins, and then Bart calls for it once more. Obviously, right there by uh, Joseph on the ball. And they spread it wide. Roberts, low field, riding shotgun. Instead, goes slightly further afield, perhaps ill advised. Some numbers set up here. Martin brings it under his spell, whips it over the top, might receive it back. Lashker involved, but then turning into trouble was Ratcliffe. Pressure around the ball here from the Magpies. And Phillips is going to come up and contest this one. <laughs> Just monstering at the moment, Phillips, as this one's flipped over the top. Pressure comes from Simpson. And takes it over. works his way to the front, takes it out of the contest, fires the handball back to Sutton. Sutton squares it up and sliding out the back is Campbell Hooker. He takes it. We go back for another one. And again, the ball use inside 50. Just a leap from the Wombers here. It is, but I think a lot of that is Phillips. You've got to feel for Hanson. I think it is in the ruck for Benorke. Manson, sorry, Isaac Manson. He's got a foot underneath Phillips with work to do, so... That first use is 
giving them every opportunity. Another snag. They are shooting the lights out this quarter with their goal kicking. Some wonderful stuff as uh, Campbell Hooker adds another one. And they extend the lead out to 66 points. Now, whoever's on the scoreboard here has got RSI. Sick of putting goals on the Glenorchy list up there. They're either having a snooze or they're just done. They've just had enough for the day. Eight goals and that's enough. They've stopped. Yep, leave it up to the YouTubers. Well, again, the fade from Glenorchy. You know, they come out. I'm sure they had a positive pep talk at quarter time about what they wanted to do, and they implemented that for the first few minutes. Their pressure has been a little bit better than the first quarter, but Lauderdale just proving their strength here. So back into the middle it goes. And a chance, perhaps, for the Magpies to get something going this time. A long ball, almost brought down there by Joseph, but he's... Collected in a strong tackle, fought on Joseph, did well to release, and then great rundown tackle from Ling. Spins out the back in favour of the Bombers, though, and sweeping across Winter. And they're able to work it out. The chip to half back, and immediately retreat back to Suki. Perhaps this is a danger pocket. Try and execute the switch, but as you mentioned, Mitch, this is a bit of an approach that hasn't worked for teams today. And that one just floated, and Adam Roberts able to get across. Maybe just a wind pocket or something in that little I don't know what it on is. the ground. You cannot get the ball out of that pocket here at KG5 today. They've just been thereabouts, Glenorchy. A couple of near big marks, a couple of free kicks that haven't gone their way. It's been thereabouts for them, so I think they'll be not completely lost when they go into half time. It's been thereabouts for them on a couple of occasions. Yeah, this is Sutton flicks the handle over the top to Keltonenza. That's Great a kick. lovely ball. Campbell Hooker presenting up and again very happy to bite that kick off into the corridor. Open up the angles. McManus driving them forward. Just too sure of Smith paddled in front of him. Boskett will go in, but first of the footy was Simpson. Get stoppage. The, uh, the absence of Duffy who's outstanding in the ruck last week, mm -hmm. shining a bit here for the Magpies. I'd love to have Ben Duffy out there today. Is, and we're able to get a clearance here. Smith palmed it down and go back in after it. Swung the full 360 with Hayden. Smith calmed it down. The tackle from Hayden. To charge down. Now an opportunity for Hooker. Just puts it in deep. Finds his man out the back and running into an open goal is Campbell Hooker who finishes the work. And they have another one and extend their lead to 72. Well, they're dominating around the ball, but I still just love what Lauderdale are doing. Anywhere they get it around their 50, they don't blaze away. They lower their eyes, they've done it all day, and their skills have been exceptional. And that just a little kick out the back, a little bit of luck there. read it beautifully in the air, but they have not blazed away. They're bringing their other teammates into it, sharing it around, and they're reaping the rewards because of that. And the defender taking front position there, and the hooker combination. Riley to Campbell, getting it done. Rooming a handful here this afternoon, so 79 plays 7. It's about 25 minutes in the second term as Gunther now having a run in the rough. And the fall to Sam Tilly is able to clear it out towards Sutton. He'll try and track this one down and hop to shoot Jenkins. The boundary line beats them both. And that's Gunther. I think they were pretty reluctant to, to move their defensive wall out of there, but I think you realise they, they need a new bigger body in the ruck here Absolutely. to make <laughs> Especially now Phillips is doing a bit of the ruck work. Shallow throw, Phillips takes advantage, paddles it down. High, arching kick inside the forward 50. Off hand, spills out the back, low field first to it. And he was, as soon as he gathered, he was going to be slung in the neck by Boskett. And a bit of a fumble, coughs it up. Tilly turns with it, sends it over the head of Smith. And trickles out of play. Smith. 
Smith takes it out of the ruck himself, gathers, gives off the handball to Hooker, and from a metre out, Hooker has another one. Unselfish from the big man, and the goals continue to flow here for the Bombers. We hoped it wouldn't happen, but it's getting a bit ugly now. Crawling towards half time, Glenorchy, after a positive start to both quarters, fading very, very hard, and Waterdale's dominance and ascendancy just taking over now. Particularly when you can do things like that. Yes, yeah. The, the Ruck uh, division is uh, certainly standing out. And probably harping on it a bit, but he's really just so noticeable. Uh, the size advantage they've got in there, and they are taking full advantage. It's 85 plays 7 now. After they kicked the uh, first goal of the quarter, it's been 7 goals 1 since that point from the Bombers. They've also found their, their accuracy in front of goal in this turn. Tilly, then by Gunther. Phillips puts it down. Going nowhere as Kevin Thompson is first to it. And it's wrapped up. Gunther. He did a claim, but got his handball away. Impact in there, mate. Working for Green, bounced off his chest. And now Martin has time to pick a kick, but he might have invited in Blowfield. Tilly did well, kept his feet. Phillips reaches in, gets it out, gives it to Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe turns back, and they're lining up through the corridor here again. Bell Chambers now storming through the middle of the ground. Goes looking for Smith. Just grasped it, though. Umpire says play on. And take clean possession here. Continenza comes away with it. Gives it back to Boskett. Turns onto the right. Snaps towards goal. Thor Boskett with a beautiful finish. And they have their 14th and 8th of the quarter. They are piling it on. And they kick away to an 84 point lead. Blyfield coming off for uh, Glenorchy a little bit worse for wear, but a good contest from him. I'd be pleased seeing young blokes like that. Complete disregard for himself, flying for the ball. Probably didn't look as good as what happened uh, for the Lauderdale player. He kept his feet, but still a wonderful effort all the same. He's all right, though. Pride hurt a little bit, I reckon, there. Physically looks to be OK, looks fortunately. To be okay. In front of us there, so we tick into the 30th minute at half-time siren. Not too far away. I think the Magpies will take it at this point. They just need to regroup here. As Phillips throws it oh down goodness. beautifully again. This time to Franklin, launches them forward, and Hooker! The sticky mid springs in another one. My goodness, that is unbelievable in the middle there. It's in a what else can you do but look at that in awe and think, goodness me, you wouldn't mind being on the receiving end of that. Good to be a forward today. Yeah, Hooker will go back after the siren. Yeah. Eight straight have they kicked this quarter? Is it eight goals straight? Well, yeah, we've got it behind on the stream. But, um, the scoreboard at the ground's now been updated, and that says eight straight. I don't remember them having a behind. I'm just I don't going to go off what our score has got here, so I reckon you're right. This could be for nine straight for the quarter. Smith spikes it there and uh, <laughs> gets it across, but won't count. So it ends, I think, eight goals straight for the turn. Yeah. 14.690, not 14.7 we've got. We'll just get that one tied up at half time. Either way, after Glenorchy kicked the first goal and showed really good intent in that first two minutes, the class of the Bombers just took over from that point on. Yep. And the size, perhaps, more so. Oh, it's a battle of the sizes. That's the problem here for Glenorchy. They're just undermanned in terms of the bodies, and Lauderdale are absolutely taking them to the slaughterhouse that quarter. Unbelievable use that Phillips gives them in the middle. Uh, but they'll regroup. They're a young side, hopefully come out back out with some some fresh energy in the second half. Half time, a comfortable lead here for the Lauderdale Bowlers. We'll see if the Magpies can turn it around in the second half, but looking like a pretty easy uh, day at the office so far here for the Bombers as they look to open their account here in season 2024. Entering this one 0-2, looks like they're on route to their first victory. Be back in about a quarter of an hour's time with the second half here. It's the Bombers in complete control at half time.
Shock 
we could get Sido for us and play on sticks and we go, well, let's bring sticks into the conversation. How accurate is the assessment given he's in a knee brace? Thank you. 
And we're back for the second half here at KG5. It's either an 83 or an 89 point lead here for Lauderdale. We're still getting to the bottom of that one. Uh, pretty comfortable either way after a dominant first half from the Bombers. And we've got uh, one of the Bombers' stars with us, an injured star at the moment. Uh, special guest in uh, the country. Well, Box is probably overselling, but joining us is uh, Sam Second. Sam, good afternoon. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me up here. Nice spot to watch the footy. Not too bad. You must be pretty happy with how the boys are going here this afternoon. Yeah, the boys are looking really good. Um, yeah, playing some slick footy and, and getting it in there and obviously um, kicking straight in front of goal, which is, um, which is good. So um, hopefully the boys can put the foot down here and um, have a big win. And uh, what's the, the injury update on yourself? Obviously, you looked off here in round one. How far away are you from returning? Yeah, so I hurt my hammy round one. Um, hopeful for next week or the Anzac Day, so not too far away. Um, been training a bit, so um, yeah, looking forward to getting back out there. And yeah, don't really enjoy sitting on the sidelines, so it'll be, it'll be good to back, good, good to get back out there. Small trickles out of play here. Early doors in quarter number three. Sig, we've seen uh, Phillips dominating out here. You only got three quarters with him so far this season. You must sit out there and, well, sitting up in the stands here today, watching him out there dominate and love to be duoing up with him out on the field. Can't wait, I bet. Yeah, I certainly, um, it's, it's hard watching some of the taps go down to the boys. I certainly wouldn't mind, wouldn't mind being on the end of it. So I think when, when I get back, I'm pretty excited to um, be on the receiving end of some of those taps. Um, yeah, he's obviously a class player, and um, you, can, you can see he's been in the system for such a long time. It's the way he plays and the way he prepares himself as well. I went to in the, in the first two weeks, Sam. Obviously not the, the ideal start for this season, but uh, what's the, the mood been like at the club after probably the, not the first couple of weeks of the season you're looking for? Yeah, obviously not ideal um, losing the first two, but I, I feel like our systems were, were good at times. Um, we just have to we had to work on a few areas, and um, I think a game like today and the way we're playing is certainly um, going to hold us in good stead, and sometimes you need a win like this to, um, to do that. As the Magpies will open it up, so they continue to start quarters well, the Galorgi Magpies, and you are flexing it over the top and sliding it through there is Manson and they draw first blood. And they've done this uh, a couple of times Mitch, they've started quarter as well can they carry it on this time is the big challenge for them. Yeah quarter one, two and now three started with a bit of momentum Lauderdale have found a way to shut them down but as we said some nice fresh energy for them allowing themselves to find the big sticks earlier speaking of big sticks you go, we're joined here as well by another injured uh, member Michael Blackburn Sticks, you're walking around with a knee brace on. You just showed us the, the footage of the medial in a pracky match earlier on. How are you travelling? Um, hopefully only another week in the knee brace, Mitch, and then um, probably be four or five weeks after that. So um, looking at after the bye against maybe Kingston or the following week against Clarence. And we know what you're like with kicking a, a snag or two sticks. You must be out there licking your lips a little bit at the entries that you're getting and how nice it would be to running onto some of the inside 50s that your teammates are providing. Yeah, big flips giving them first, first hands at stoppage and some of the ball going inside 50 is crisp today. So, yeah, pretty tough watch from the sidelines, especially when you fellow forward, big can hookers, clunking everything and kick five to half time. So, yeah. He's been in good form. Sticks, we asked you go a moment ago about his opportunity to play with Flip for you know three quarters yourself. You've got all these big recruits down the club. You've been there for a few years now. You must be excited yourself to get the opportunity whenever that comes to play with these big names that you brought to the club. Yeah, it was a great feel. And um, Andy Lydon and everyone behind doors have done great in the off-season to get, get the list we've got. Unfortunately, we've got six, seven injured at the moment on the sidelines, but... Hopefully over the next few weeks we start to get everyone back and it's going to be bloody exciting to get out there with everyone. Just another last one for me, Alan uh, Christensen. He played three quarters and then had a shower before getting ready for the senior game, but how's he moving? And I see he's smiling. <laughs> uh, nah, he eased his way into a bund and then got on the end of a few at the end of the game, which was nice for him. But um, Josh McGuinness was also um, back in the resis today, so it was good. He reckoned he had 51 by the <laughs> end of the last when he come off, so he was pretty pleased with himself as well. But no, nah, it was great to see both Bundy and Josh back out there, which is exciting. And it was a great opportunity for a lot of the younger resis boys to play with quality like that and get coaching out on the ground from them, which was amazing. So no, nah, it was great. Just offline there from Campbell Hooker. 
Uh, another one there. They've been uh, on fire in attack the Hooker Boys this afternoon. I'm not sure why you were laughing, but if Bundy listens to this back, I distanced myself greatly from that laughing. Not sure what was going on there. We're big fans of you, Bundy. All right, well, we might let you boys go, but thanks so much for joining us and good luck for recovery, and we can't wait to see you running around out there. Cheers, Bunty. Thank you. Cheers, boys. Sam Siggins and Stixie Blackburn there. A couple of handy ins to come for the Lauderdale Bombers. Looking forward to seeing what they can do when they... Back out on the park, full track. Might be tough to get into this forward line the way they've been playing today. We did make that joke with the sixty off air. He shrugged it, of course. He carries an enormous amount of confidence, so I don't think he's too worried. But you know, looking good. So back to the general play here now as the Magpies work it down the line, presenting up nicely there. Newer takes the mark. We go into the corridor. Not the best kick, might work out for them though. They give by hands and now drive it forward, but unfortunately it's just Perkins parked behind the football line all on his lonesome. Makes the intercept and slides it across to Tate Winter. Treats to Martin. He sets him up well, Martin, doesn't he? He looks like he's got a cool head on his shoulders. Real general down there, he good is. in the air. Booming kick, just what you need. Booming kick, Poland. Yeah, he's a lovely user of the football, Poland. They work it up the wing here. Patton presenting up at the football, takes a nice mark. Boskett offering short, that's ignored. Called to play on by the umpire, and he'll, in the end, just watch an ugly one into the pocket. and. Straight down the throw to Cooper Meredith. It was the bounds on the full all the end. No, take your pick out on the full of the goal. Curse pocket. Well, they're going to risk it. by this. They're going to risk it. And they've got men out this side, <laughs> so they might as well. <coughs> Hang on. Not out yet. Oh, not out Brown. yet. Brown. Oh, dear. Runs into trouble here, Tom Brown, and then just blatantly throws it out, but that's all right. Turning with it was Roberts. Roberts did it well to Ling. They had the extra man. They got there eventually, the Magpies. Ling over the top to Meredith. Meredith slides it inside 50. There was Martin. They got in the way. Broke up the play. Newer flicks a handball over the top. Tumbling a kick that just pitches inside the field of play was Finn Rackett. And then we tossed back into play. Jeez, I know that they're probably wired to lower the eyes, but on a day like today, 90 points down. Get it deep. Give the deep forward. An opportunity in there. You're not getting that many scoring shots. I would have loved to see that kick just go in nice and deep towards the goal square. So, we've been pretty competitive early in quarters. It's sustaining it beyond the opening moments. It's been the problem. Smith takes for a place against Meredith. Ratcliffe was in there, going nowhere, hooker. And Perkins. Like some pressure. <laughs> Meredith flicks it boundary side. Ling back to Roberts. Roberts bursting oh. through traffic with some class there, Roberts. Can he find a target inside Ford 50? Not quite yes. backing back with the flight. Was Poland got a hand in the way. Courageous stuff and then spills out to Sutton. Sutton driving off the back half. Chips it up towards Tilly. Just some good body work there from Tilly to work his defender underneath it. Borks fires the handball to Sutton who continues his run. He flicks it over the top to Phillips with time and space to pick out an opposition defender. And then to Seth taken. And that guy's short to Hayden. He's off. Has to go. Finds a target. Stagnates a little here off half back. Eventually, Roberts works hard to give him an option. And a long way to get that ball. And they'll go back through the corridor here. Running on was Simpson. Has a bounce in the middle of the ground, Simpson. And then uh, Blowfield just gets in the way of Mule there, takes the mark. They've got some free men here. Can he find one? He sends it deep inside the Ford 50. Working hard was Meredith. Couldn't quite bring it down. The numbers at the full favoured the Bombers. The handball across to Rackett. And Rackett clears it out there and he finds Perkins. Perkins. 
barely the 15. There's been a lot of those. For McManus. He certainly has. Handball back inside to Martin. Martin launching it. Tilly with three to beat. Came from behind. Almost snared it away. Gunther brought down by Boskets. Holding the footy. Thor Boskett, he's made his tackle stick today. And he plays on quickly because he sees a man in acres of space out the back and just chips it there and he finds now Franklin. Like a thief in the night, but Thor just came from absolutely nowhere. One of those ones where you think you're out, you think you're free, you need your teammates to be letting you know what's going on. But Thor, for a big man, was pretty nimble there. Bang. Great kick too. So Franklin... You go back. I think we're going with the ground scoreboard at this point. So it's with their 16. We've made the decision. He sends it on its way. It's just off line. Well, I think he is that the, the home side aren't going to be giving him an extra goal. That's true. Mm. That's a great point. So I reckon we might need to, to get uh, our scoreboard operators to add uh, a goal as well as that behind there from Franklin to, to Lord Rather on 98, I think, believe. That's according to the ground scoreboard. And they might be on a little bit more here as they butcher that one straight down the throat there of Hooker. who chips and says, have another crack, Matt Franklin. Because, again, he was all on his own in that pocket. No one wants to stand near Matt Franklin. No, no one wants to go near him. And uh, Lauderdale have been doing it all day, bringing their teammates into the game. So Glenorchy still three and a half quarters in. A little bit unaware there that that's what Lauderdale are doing. Leaving men standing on their own 20, 30 metres out from goal. And he sends it on its way as he learnt from his last kick. No, he hasn't. He's missed this one as well. Uh, 15 99 they move on to. <laughs> Looking at 2 1 13. 86 points in our ears. <coughs> this is where it really broke down in quarter number one for the Magpies, trying to get it out of defensive 50. Phillips almost pulls the turnover. Found the target in McGann. Yeah, long towards Whitford, but oh. coming in from the side, Martin takes a great mark. Fine aerialist Tyler Martin, and he wheels around and just chips one in the Phillips oh, direction. Man. Too big, too strong. Just didn't have options going to walk in. They had to hold on to the ball, rightfully so. But all that does is just build up and build up an enormous amount of pressure. And he chips it over the top for McManus. So it's closer to goal, but the angle more severe. Uh, it's not McManus, in fact. It's uh, Blushka. And he's already kicked one. Yeah, when that pressure builds up, is obviously going to come the error in skill and uh, kicking to... Teammates that uh, under duress and certainly under man with a couple of Lauderdale players sitting on there behind. So Lush out for his second of the afternoon. The crowd will tell you if it's any good. Hangs at near side. He's very popular with the Lauderdale he fans is. today. He's a big personality from what I know. He's a good young man. So they bring up triple digits. 15-10 place 2-1. Oh, oh dear. dear. And uh, that has been a real Achilles heel today, kicking out. And there's not too many excuses you can make for those ones. No, and if you're going to spray one, keep it away from the biggest man and the probably more dominant bloke <laughs> on the field, Andrew Phillips. Yeah, you, uh, having just handed off that last one and watched it behind, says I'll just take care of this one myself. Yeah, leave it to me. Phillips you know that, he's his fourth sends it off so it looks beautiful yeah, off the boot that. that is superb for Andrew Phillips who has shown his class here this afternoon and he extends the lead to 93 points and he really bucks the trend of uh, Rucks not being able to kick the football because <laughs> there is no one out there on the field who has nailed or laced the ball better than him all afternoon no, we're right behind that one from the moment it left his boot sailed through at a good height Straight as a diet. Beautiful kick. So you know, they extend the lead to 93 points. So a pretty uh, one-sided games around the TSL here. Three at the moment. Clarence 51 points ahead of Launceston. 
and Northland Siston uh, 93 ahead of North Hobart. The other results, it's, uh, a couple of the contenders playing a couple of the bottom sides this week, and that's playing out and bearing out on the scoreboards. This one will have to be recalled. Well, just looking to build that confidence back up after defeating the first couple of weeks of the season. Smith and Meredith. Meredith, a chance to try and take it away, and he gets the clearance, swings it up towards uh, Jenkins. On the ground, Jenkins just kicked it into space, but Sutton was there, trying to balk inside, couldn't get around Roberts, no. Looks the handball back out to Poland. Sutton once more. Just finesses one, going a little early there, Tilly, and that'll be an unrealistic attempt. His eyes lit up in front of the bench. Thought he's a moment. He's flying high a few times today, Sam yes. Tilly. He's got a spring in his step. Pretty good on the, uh, the vertical jump, I reckon. So Hayden just directs uh, his teammate into space there, and Jenkins guides into the ball nicely. Jenkins has Liam Ling presenting short, but picks out only Poland. Poland shows too much of it there to Ling. Ling with a wide open goal, sets sail and it's off target. Just rushed the kick a little in the end. He yeah, had more time. Don't trouble the scorers. Phillips now bounding out after that one. All inside to McManus. Sutton wants the switch because he is standing on his own on the near wing to us. A lot of direct traffic to get that executed and they now will look to do so, but not quite shut that down pretty well. So he forces him to go back to McManus. And the last line of defence is uh, Bell Chambers. Martin. Tries to draw Roberts to him and fires off the handball. Sutton has been waiting on his own. The everywhere two man. minutes there, Ray Sutton. Eventually he got the ball. Shows how to find space. Runs hard to find it. That's a nice bit of work there from Hayden. Forces the turnover, but able to recapture it. Bell Chambers. Okay. Drives it down. Boskett, they were lining up out the back here, the Bombers. They're out. And Boskett chips it over the top and finds Luke Patton. Who has <laughs> tripped himself up there, Luke Patton? <laughs> that is. <laughs> He's dead set, just tripped over his own feet. No one within miles of him. You'd want to kick it now, no? He doesn't. Spike back centrally, cleverly by Phillips in the end. The time for Males. Uses every second he had, eventually flicks it across to Gunther, and they're in trouble here, holding the footy. They didn't want to kick to the contest. And they delayed, 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 and then were caught holding the fleet. For all the inside 50 they're getting and the shots on goal, they're getting loaded up. Another one missed there. It'd be interesting to see if they could try and find themselves in front of goal a little bit more. I noticed their pattern before he tripped over himself out in the pocket, but led to that, led backwards to that pocket rather than heading inside goal. So something for them to factor in considering they're spraying them all this quarter. Yeah, quality of uh, shots and opportunity always something you want to be working on. Not all shots are created equal. So this one's worked to the back pocket. In mm -hmm. area they probably uh, struggled in the first two weeks a little bit. Mm -hmm. Goal kicking. So the easier they can make it for themselves, the better. Oh, they'll just get it to Andrew Phillips every time, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's yeah. a safe bet. Me and Hooker haven't really looked like missing today. As Poland again intercepts. It's set up very nicely behind the ball at the moment. Birkins in plenty of space on the wing. Switches on again. Ignores that though and just heads centrally and turn, turns it over. That's the neck price. They're on out this side, Gronoki. 4v1 out here. He likewise doesn't want to use it. All the numbers are this side of the ground, so they're going to have to go there eventually. And a trick back to Gunther. He's got Clark in some space. Instead goes a little bit more central to Hayden. 
It's got me baffled why they refu- refuse to kick long. They had men on there, 30 metre kick, and they're looking for the 20. And chopped it up once more, Perkins. Smooth it out, looking there for Hooker, couldn't quite find him. Numbers out the back for the Magpies, Jack Mayles. With some composure, fires in a dart to Thompson. Thompson chips it into the corridor, tumbling and taking the mark, Isaac Manson. He had Green on, jumping in in front of him was Thompson and then ran into trouble and he's caught holding the footy. Just breaking down in the middle of the ground once more. Tilly wants it wide. That's where they'll go. A really good effort though to get a fist in there and not infringe from Manson. And that'll be over the shoulder against Perkins. And it continues on afterwards there between uh, Brown and Perkins. And uh, Tilly. Tilly didn't like the treatment and forgot the ball was still live and went after the man. <laughs> Completely forgot that he was meant to go and get the, the pill first. So, much of Green. <laughs> Pulled out the short handball to Ling. Did, oh, and in oh. the end, sold him into trouble because a freight train in Martin was there waiting to line him up. Tell you what, Andrew, this has been an entertaining quarter of footy for me, but I still just can't get past Patton tripping over himself. <laughs> I still just can't move past it. Unbelievable friend. footage. I think his friends will have a field day with oh, that one, clipping that vision. Content City. Beautiful ruck work there from Smith, won it down, and then punched forward by Franklin. Happy to take it across the line, Campbell Hooker. Just Franklin can tackle. Another big moment there, trying to break through. Glenorchy, as I said, persistent with that short chip, flick it around, get runners out, and then you run into a wall like Matt Franklin when you feel like you're out. A bit disheartening for you. Smith swings an arm at it. Franklin gets it to Perkins. Boskett wanted to chop with Perkins. It was drive them inside the Ford 50. Juggled, not quite mark completed. Eventually found its way through. Blaschka, he puts it up towards Phillips. Extending Gunther did well in the defensive contest though. They should be able to clear defensive 50. Although the kick impacted by a tackle. Sutton applying some pressure. And should they're able to clear their lines. And take a mark. This is and sliding in. Chips it over the top. Couldn't quite get that one, Cox. We get a free kick though. Should allow Lord to set up behind the football though. So you know, for the ball to be returned. Short kick this time, a good one to Thompson. And they find a target inside forward 50 here, Callum Thompson. Adam he Roberts, put, fresh off the bench in the pocket on his own. Played on, kicked it centrally. Over by Ling, but he's brought down. Oh. That was red hot. He's played a hole in the ball. Yeah. Not about that one. It's Tilly. Receives and flicks the handball to Poland. The distributor off half back. Some razor and balls off there and he lopes away there and sends another one down the line for Blaschka. This one just eluding him. And flies with the numbers. And they use a numerical advantage. Look it down the line. Cox, Perkins in from the side. Squared it back, but gathered by Blowfield. And he's going to be caught holding the footy. As long as we take back over, Tilly rewarded. Back into the middle again. Lovely ball use once more. They've got three men and launching forward. Ben Williams has snuck out the back here. He takes the ball at half forward. And he sends it over the top. Next link in the chain, Campbell Hooker. Well, another kick to the pocket, which we spoke about a moment ago, but Hooker is left footer. Should suit him nicely here. I always wonder with that sling tackle. The umpire knew that that was holding the ball. I feel like they've got also an opportunity, umpires, to get in early and blow that before the player then feels they need to bring the player down. And Hooker kick. goes back and again, dead eye straight. The goal-kicking exhibition in a short quarter, that one. We've not gone 24 minutes as the siren rings out here. Perhaps a mercy 
for Glenorchy because that takes the lead to an even 100 points at three-quarter time. It's been dominant stuff from Lauderdale. 17-11, Glenorchy 2-1-13 at the final change. Well, it could get ugly, and if it wasn't for the first two minutes of each quarter where Glenorchy have found a little bit of rhythm, uh, it's been all one-way traffic. And a 100-point lead going into the, the last break. Lauderdale will be pretty keen to put the foot down. If they haven't done already, I'm not sure how they put the foot down much further than what they've already done, but it's a very one-sided match here today. Stem the bleeding a little bit at least that quarter. Less damage on the scoreboard, but uh, the sting starting to go out of this one. We'll be back for the final term. I reckon the coaching staff of the Magpies will be trying to get it back under triple digits. Let's win the last quarter. will probably be their own, but at three-quarter time here, this one well and truly over. All rail on route to a massive first victory of the season. We'll be back shortly with quarter number four.
So back for the final quarter here at KG5, an even 100 point, no, we've changed the scoreboard here at the venue, we've gone again, we've subtracted the goal back off. Oh goodness me. Can't, can't keep up with the scoreboard off Rose here Mitch, but uh, it's back under, it's now 95 points. So apparently it's 16, 12, 108 and 2, 1, 13, it's, uh, we're apparently uh, our person doing the stream was correct. There's some weird things happening today, I'll tell you, some very strange things going on out here at KG5, so nothing will surprise us in this last term. So 95 points is the budget, apologies there, so we're back underway here in the final term and perhaps flipping the bag gets a little bit Ratcliffe now in the middle here for the final term. Yes, a little Bosket in there as well, they've changed the midfield group, we'll hit a lot of that. Why not with the game under control? But the Magpies to take it away though, and they spot up Manson and turn and go, and they'll charge inside the Ford 50. Can they find Blowfield? He impacted the contest with a spoil. Oh, slapped out there by Bell Chambers. Fell back to Blowfield. That's it on the boot, and the Magpies get their third. I reckon their three goals are all come in the opening minutes of quarters. Yep. Quarters two, three, and four. So another bright start and a classy finish that from Blowfield. Yeah, a little bit of deja vu, but at the end of the day, that's what you want to see, isn't it? You're down and out, you're 9,500 odd points down, you want to see them come out in the last quarter and continue having a bit of a crack, so some positive signs there. It'd be nice if they could certainly hold on to that momentum for a little bit longer than previous quarters, but a positive start nonetheless. Obviously done, it was well done initially by Bell Chambers, but uh, fell back to Blowfield and snapped truly, looks like he's moved deep forward now. In position of changes heading into this last one. Smith, Meredith, Boskett into the middle, arches the back, turns away, and then goes looking for Continenza, who reels it in. Alex Continenza, chips wide and finds Finn Racket. Now Racket driving it in the Phillips direction, forced to spoil from behind, did so decisively. Martin. Puts it out there to Ratcliffe. Four hands, Brown. Runs back there by Ratcliffe. Gave it to Phillips in some trouble. Strong enough to get out of it. Gave it to Boskett. He screws a kick around the corner and finds Tilly at half forward. Plenty of space for the forwards to lead into. And Tilly spears one in there. Just a little bit too short on this occasion, but he got his knees hook up. In dispute. Magpies well, had a chance to clear it, but send it as far as Phillips. Might be able to 
get it working. Blowfield presenting up, spoiling from behind nicely though. Williams. And working it onto the boot, Isaac Hayden. Oh, drifting back, Martin takes a terrific mark. Great mark, eyes on the ball. Great courage. And he retreats back to Bell Chambers. His kick just hangs a little bit, but eventually marked there by Winter. It's it moving quickly, sending it wide, looking for Hooker. It's been accommodating bounce, but the numbers favour the Magpies here. Hooker did pretty well oh, in the end. Well. Gathered it, found Perkins. Perkins over the top to Tilly. Tilly. The searching lead offered from Franklin. Taken away from him. Stays in play. Pushed there by Hayden. Eventually clear and kick. It's going to come right back at him because he picked it up Perkins. He was off to his right and fires it in deep. Phillips a likely target. And he reels it in again, Big Phillips. He's unstoppable. He certainly is. I was just watching that play. Uh, Glenorchy taking it down this wing. Lord are bringing it back down in pretty quick time. But I just think when you're 100 points down, you'd get almost another teammate over there on Phillips as well and make it a bit of a two-on-one. But they left it to the one-on-one. -on -one. He just had an easy run at it. He's way too big, 30 metres out. Side angle, pretty almost uncontested mark. He would have loved to see a Glenorchy play get over there and support his teammate. Just... Uh... And no match up for this man today, although whether any other competition does remains to be seen. He's saying that too. Five players could have got over and supported and still maybe the same result with how big and dominant he is. Speaking of five, is that number five? No, just off line from Phillips on this occasion. First errant kick from him today. And he's got some pretty handy service. This is one's Chipped uh, into the pocket there by Whitford. Not his tidiest work. And the downs. And it's been an area where things have really broken down. As you've mentioned a few times, they've persisted with this short chipping game, which is all right, but you've got to nail your kicks if you're going to yep. do it, and they simply haven't. So 90 points at the margin. 109 leads. 19. This one falls in the lap of Gunther, who... Just bites off some territory with a long searching kick. And pitches inside. Get some territory there, work their way out the wing. Yeah, the short kicking thing is interesting, isn't it? I mean, the only way to get good at that and have that as a solid platform of your game is to keep doing it. But I just feel that when a margin creeps out this far, just get the ball in long, make the defenders of Lauderdale think a little bit differently. It's been a bit obvious all day, but we're not in the four walls. So Meredith palm that one down. Bombers will win the football back, though. And we'll across to Perkins. Clever little flick over the top. Getting a hand in, though, was Meredith. Broke it up nicely. And we toss back into play once more. Sun still shining down. It's been a lovely day for football here at KG5. It certainly has. Lovely weather to start the TSL season. From those uh, cold, windy, rainy days, uh, not too far off. Probably the last one in a shorts and t-shirt for us. Not too far away for the wet weather footies back in vogue, but enjoying this run to start the year as the Magpies take the ball and have an opportunity to go inside the Ford 50 here. You were the target just over his head. In the end, it fell into the hands of Racket, who slaps it on the boot, searching for Perkins. Near across to pressure Ling, Perkins missed his target with a handball. And Maggie's with it back. Ling. Combining well, almost well. Missed the handball. Slapped on cleverly over the top, though, to Hayden. Hayden spears it to Muir. Oh, dear. Oh, no. Drops one out. His name written all over it. It's not been his day. And then brought down his winter. Spent it before he had it there. I think he's already thinking about his shot for goal. Yep. Yep, you mentioned it. It's just not been his day, Ben Muir. And finally gets an opportunity there once it's out in front of him. And cooks it. One down towards Ratcliffe, roving it nicely there was Joseph. Thank you. It wasn't Joseph, it was Hayden in fact, and that's a wonderful goal from Jordan Hayden. Roved it, snapped it back over the shoulder from 40 out. That's a difficult kick and he absolutely nailed it. So the Magpies get their second of the last turn. Yeah, it's a beautiful goal. Nice class. I think he might have even caught one 
a little bit high on his uh, on his way through here as well. Yeah, he did on the replay. Yeah. Had enough now. Knew where they were. Great kick, great finish. So they cut the margin back to 84 points. Took the first two goals in the last quarter. Seven and a half in. And they push on and win this final term, I think, will be the aim for the Magpies at this point. And, uh, positive start in that regard. Sting going out of it a little, but uh, going to keep looking for the positives as that's beautifully rocked down from Smith. The Sutton Sutton lost his footing there under pressure from Roberts. And still go inside the 450 anyway, but good to set mark was taken by Meredith. Meredith will just fire it right down the middle. And it pitches. Oh, really there for it. Schools out. Too heavy traffic. Bell Chambers gathers. Low underground handball. On its way through to Franklin and then Cracklick works at the basket. Thought about the look away handball. Circus trick. Caught on his back, somehow <laughs> regathered and got a kick away. <laughs> to the basket. Unconventional, a little effective, and now he's gonna do some defensive work. But a strong pair of hands shown from Green. He's got a couple of options in the middle if he wants to risk biting off the kick he did and they Slam the door shut on that. Keeps forward though and bustling through Callum Thompson ran right into the big Ruckman Smith. You see the, the Lord of the they left that kick open. They wanted him to, to bite it off and they then did. they suddenly came shut. It was three on one when he went for it. Ling rose the ball, sends it high inside 50. It's going to be a free kick. Play on says the umpire. Pressure applied by Bailey Jenkins. Bosket. Vice like prep. Chips it in the middle, it's a risky kick. Look at no favours, recovered the situation well. Good pressure again from Ling getting a hand in and jumping in was Green to apply it. The tackle slung, it was Franklin, just got a bit of tail on it. And then worked forward by Hooker, one-on-one's inside the Ford 50 oh, and once God. more just monstering it is the unstoppable Phillips who is marking everything that comes his way. Yeah, he sure is. But she's been impressed with Glenorchy this quarter, though. They're still flowing with the ball. They're getting in front. They're attacking. They're taking the game on. They're having a crack. Josh Arnold would be really pleased with that. A couple of goals this quarter, which is nice. And that's you're absolutely right. You said it a moment ago. They'll be looking to finish off with some positives, but hard to have too many positives when the ball gets laced out to this man. So Phillips... For his fifth, he's looking for here, and once again he nails it. He's got a day out, Andrew Phillips, and he extends the lead out to 90 points. And plenty of time for this afternoon. It'll be interesting to see what that balance will be like between ruck and forward as the season develops. I suspect we'll see him a bit more in the ruck, especially when Siggins returns. But uh, geez, he's a, a fair weapon to be able to swing down to the goal square uh, when you need to spell him. He's a weapon anywhere. Thor Boz got having a rest forward. Been impressed with him in this last quarter as well. He pins the ears back. You can see him. He knows I'm going to give my all here for a couple of moments, build some momentum for his side. Certainly a well-earned break down there in the forward pocket. He's had a good, uh, good day for all. He has some really nice things. Yeah, important piece of the puzzle moving forwards is Meredith as well up against Smith. Ling. Thought was taken in the back, play on the curl. They'll go back in and he'll try and surge out the back. Beautifully done, Liam Ling. Tears away from the stoppage. Can he find a target in Jenkins? It was spiked away from him. And the bowlers now look to bounce off half back Perkins. Bosket presenting, still working hard. His Bosket just ran a little too far underneath that one. Fell out of the back for Phillips. Slick handball over the top for Hooker. For the free kick, none forthcoming. <laughs> Manson oh, shanks that one. Straight out of bounds on the full. Bill Chambers retreated, but uh, had to get back out of play. Here we go again. Flip pattern sneaks on and might just get a disposal. Watch out for that invisible man here again. No, he's away. He's all good this time. <laughs> Sends it long. Chopped off, good mark, back to the flight there from Connelling. He sends it wide, looking for Roberts. Under pressure from Sutton. Tries to weave underneath him, Sutton fighting on. Gets a toe in. 
Uh, drags it back in. Can he extract the football? They battle away for it. In which the umpire says, I'll have it. I've glanced at my paperwork a couple of times today as to how many lings are out there. There's a couple. They're sneaky. They're good little players to watch, aren't they? Yeah, they've been uh, probably amongst their side's best. Not quite as many uh, hookers as there, are, as there are hookers in the Lawdale lineup. Correct. Yeah, they're out there and they've had a day out. Yeah, the Ling, the Ling boys have been good out there, especially Liam Ling. Been really impressed with his his work rate. That's not stopped running in the engine room. Some over the shoulder paid there. It'll, uh, the way the bombers, they'll this one towards the half forward line. Trapped underneath it was Campbell Hooker. Bosket applying the pressure. Long ball in the Meredith direction. Won't quite reach him. Uh, midway point of the final turn here at KG5. Lauderdale on route. First victory of the season. I'm glad to open their account. Bigger fish to fry this season, but important that they got the first four points of the season. And for it on the wing. Smith a little high there. And will be a freight. Yeah, it wasn't until chatting to Sigo and uh, Michael Blackburn at half time realising how many they have out. There's some some uh, classy players for Lauderdale that are on the sidelines injured at the moment. So it'll be an exciting back end of the year when they get them all back playing together. Almost low field in the end. Over the shoulder of the Colt, so an opportunity here. Shoot for goal for Matt Joseph. A chance for the third goal for the Magpies here in the final term. Well, we mentioned that the importance of winning the last quarter and the work rate, which hasn't died off. We've seen them persisting with their efforts all across the ground, and the coach will be pleased with that, particularly, as you mentioned, from the Lings. A number of their smaller players around the ball continuing to have a crack. And Joseph drives it. Just drives it near side. Four behind. 89 points out the margin. Poland from fullback. Charges out and will launch this one up towards the wing. It's a target on the chest. The markers dropped handball across to uh, Hayden. Hayden turned it over. Hooker. Pumps it. Back and he as well, inaccurate. Whitford heads wide. And stab pass. Receiving it again, Hayden. Quite content once more to slow play it. The bomber's back behind the ball now. Blocking that one away, but uh, a jumper grab has been spotted there. And Jenkins take the free kick. And he wheels on quickly. To the dangerous area inside 50. Blowfield was there. Very heavy traffic. Slapping on the boot once more was uh, Joseph. Couldn't direct his effort. Pole on that big left boot. Phillips is lurking out here. Boskett calling for it. Can you sit on both of them? That's where we go. Phillips from behind, but oh. uh, Gunther. This takes a nice strong mark, plucks it in front of him. He looks to spear one, but Boskett had just dropped back into the space intelligently. And he intercepts. And says, steady it down. <coughs> No need for risk taking football at this point. Sutton. Tilly on over the top. Well, he was too, he went to the interchange. And the man who replaced him will get it instead in uh, Nat Franklin. He wheels inside and sends a flat one of the corridor, spoiled away nicely by Ling. Gathered by Williams. His best kick, but makes it work. Back to Williams. 
Uh, chip it wide for Perkins. Perkins has got rack, uh, racket on over the top. He goes in the hooker direction, finds him. Just too far out to score, so he squares it up, but plenty of magpies back there. And they're not taking it, they'll immediately look to bounce off the half back line. Some running dash here, haven't seen much of that today. And Bill Chambers intercepting there, not a great kick from Whitford. Tilly. Tilly driving it once again in the Phillips direction, but Gunther for a position on that occasion. A couple of good small wins for Gunther towards the close out of the game. He's a very good player. It's, that's how Dolan shows the, the class, game. doesn't it? He will win his battles most weeks. So he was just probably best on ground last week, just about Gunther. And he's such a weapon, but today it's just been outmatched. But he's shown his quality here a couple of contests in the last. He's going to be an important player for the Magpies this season. Chips short for Thompson. Thompson spotted a run of Simpson, put it out in front of him. Simpson gathers over the top to Joseph. Joseph sets sail for home, but just puts it across the face. And out of bounds on the full. Defensive 50 off hands. Skipping the path of racket. To Perkins. Hit it straight into Brown. And he just scored it out of play. Smith up against Meredith. Meredith came over the top. Tackle low on the hook up. Well, they're winning the quarter, Glenorchy. Yeah, seven points well, up. Math served me correctly, so it's a solid way for them to be finishing out this game, which has been very one-sided, as we've mentioned a number of times. Yeah, they'll look to, to build from that. Mm -hmm. Back North over. Monsterston certainly, I mean, you wouldn't say in years past, but that's perhaps another one that could yep. be gettable for them, based off the way they've started the season. So it does appear to be a, a bit of a gap from the, the top to the bottom in the league this season. This is the impressions I've got from the first few weeks. So there'll be opportunities for the Magpies uh, this year, but this run was always going to be a pretty tough task. It's a small nail outfit who uh, very much had a point to prove after those first two weeks. And the belief that will give them seeing opportunities. It's been difficult the last few years with other sides being, you know, classes above. But this year, as you mentioned, Launceston and North Hobart getting that win. Huge belief among the group, albeit today looking at a 100-point loss. There's other goals and small wins that they'll look to achieve throughout the season. Yeah, I think they've obviously through the tough times and said, look, it's about developing players for the future, and that will be the case once again this year. Nice for them to get that win last week, but uh, I think it's still where the football club is at, and developing players so they can be competitive in, uh, well, uh, the new Southern League when it comes in next year. Yeah, season. sure. Tilly chips over the top. Spears it inside the forward 50. Near away. And one back here by Quentin Enza. And ball from Bell Chambers found a hookup. And that one drifts out to the back for the easy intercept. Oh, just lost a hold of the football <laughs> there, fullback. Recover the situation and spear to Simpson in the back pocket. He'll switch it up. That's it across to Brown. Here's the defensive 50. And yeah, unable to bring it in, Roberts out of play for a ball in.
Sutton off for a breath. Love to have a tracker on him. Yeah, many, many Ks, I reckon, that he gets through. Works very, very tough, hard. Yeah, I think he'd be in the top few most weeks, uh, I'd imagine. Is that uh, holding the footy? Going to be rewarded? Yeah, he was uh, calling for that interchange for a few minutes there. Yep. He was uh, absolutely running himself into the ground, absolutely. as per usual. Which is what you want your wingman doing. From an underappreciated role, the wingers. So, not often the running that gets noted, but... Uh, well, it's obvious, isn't it? For him, we've covered the last couple of games for Laura Allen. Um, he's all over the ground. He hits the scoreboard. And his efforts most often in passages of play are two and three possessions. So he's a workhorse. Yeah, it gets back, gives them that option off half-back when they need it. Sets things up. Very handy player. Very Sutton. And good again today. Smith just bullocks out of the rock, takes it himself, sends it up. And he finds the marking target of Campbell Hooker. Yeah, Hooker drives it. It's a three on one, almost uh, the one though. They would bring it in. Hooker, not quite. Showing some composure there was Jay Clark. And I'm going to work it out. And not the best kick to Hayden. Got plenty of time and space to manoeuvre though. Finds Meredith. Meredith, a low dart to Green. Green's kick. He's uh, intercepted by Patton. Not sure that option yeah. was really on. Wanted to go to the corridor and no one was offering Continenza what I think was expecting it. So the Magpies win it back and Liam Ling will drive them deep in towards Blowfield. The spoil came from behind. My new friends got away with it. In Poland playing sweeper. And we'll just knock that one over the top to Patton. Patton didn't fancy himself in a foot race with Simpson, so just went back, had some support from Fletcher Hooker with a high up and under to Franklin in the middle of the ground. Sends it into the middle for Bell Chambers. Now Perkins. Boskett wanting it long. That's the direction he heads, just too far over his head. Nails the clear and kick, not the Lost great it. one, but back into dispute. I crack in for it. Of course, we can't eat too long left in this one now. 25th minute, 88 points to the margin, so it looks like they're going to win the final turn of the Magpies and have something to hang their hat on at least. This one's worked forward. Tackle laid there by Whitford. Locking up Blaska. And there is the final siren. So Lauderdale, comfortable winners here at KG5. They get their first four points of the season. 17-13 or 115. Defeat Glenorchy 4-3-27. It was 42 to nothing at quarter time, and they never really looked back from that point. Set up with a, a pretty dominant uh, first half performance, and then cruise control in the second half. The Magpies, to their credit, kept on fighting, but Lauderdale far too strong to damage. Far too strong in all areas of the ground. Uh, came out swinging, as we've mentioned at the start of every quarter. Glenorchy credit to them, and they finished off the game, as you mentioned, by winning. The final term, but uh, yeah, Lauderdale's class prevailed in all areas of the ground, and we've harped on about it a lot. But that first use they get out of the middle, and then having you know big, strong players up forward with big, safe hands that can put it through the big sticks was far too much for Glenorchy to handle today. So, as we mentioned, not all doom and gloom for Glenorchy. They'll have small goals and things they want to achieve this season, but Lauderdale gets them on track. It's first win for the year, and they'll look forward to next week. Yeah, before we head off here, just run through uh, a few uh, a few of the best players out there this afternoon who uh, who caught your eye. Plenty of winners, obviously, uh, for Lauderdale. Who do you think was the, the cream of the crop today? Phillips, of course. Hooker was good. Sutton, across half-back, was solid as well. And I think Thor Boscott, um, we know how good he is, but he certainly had a lot of moments in, in all areas of the game today where he was pretty dominant. So... Um, and also Franklin as well. Matt Franklin, for me, was good. Big, big, bustling... Game-changing tackles, hit the scoreboard. He's a solid player as well. Yeah, I have to agree with that. A pretty dominant performance 
from the Waterdale Bombers. An important four points for them. Uh, we've got uh, bigger aspirations this season, but after a, a bit of an untidy start to the season, they'll be glad to take care of that one. And as we, we touched on when we were spoke with Sam Siggins and uh, Stixie Blackman earlier, some handy reinforcements on the way for them too. Yep. McGuinness themselves, their coach, there's some big names on the sidelines, injured, aren't too far away. So I reckon they'd be pretty happy with this. Not happy to drop the first two, but they'll look ahead over the next three or four weeks. If they can get two or three wins out of that, they'd be pretty happy then welcoming back their stars to be a real force to be reckoned with in the back end of the season, I'd imagine. And you'll be able to catch all of those games live and free on the AFL Tasmania YouTube channel. Every match of this final season of TSL Football Headed your way, but from KG5 here this afternoon, it's bye for now on a day where Lauderdale were too strong for the Gorky Magpies. They run out victors 17-13, 1-1-5, the Fugle Gorky 4-3, 27. Thanks for joining us. Until next week, it's bye for now.